Yo, yo, what's going on, you guys? Your boy Devon Terrell, and welcome to another Help Me Devon Raw tutorial. And today, in this Raw tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to use the good distortion, the distortion that adds character, grit, and all kinds of great things to your mixes with these new plugins that I've recently come across, the Abbey Rose Saturator from Waves, as well as the MDMX from Waves, the trio. Let's get right to it. Okay, so first and foremost, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna show you the original as far as what it sounds like before I put any of the saturation on any of the channel strips as far as the vocals and the synths and the 808s and stuff like that. And then I'll play you what it sounds like after I put it on. So this is without first. Listen close. And I swear to God, I'ma do just what I'm supposed to do. As long as I'm alive, I'ma do just what I can. Crazy how my enemies all used to be my friend. Said they keep it real, but all they do is just pretend. I With. And I swear to God, I'ma do just what I'm supposed to do. As long as I'm alive, I'ma do just what I can. Crazy how my enemies all used to be my friend. Said they keep it real, but all they do is just pretend. I just want to. So I hear a huge difference. I hear the 808, the bottom, um, it just sounds a lot bigger. The vocal is just cutting through. It sounds more exciting. And this is due to analog saturation as well as distortion. Let me show you these dope plugins that I've come across and how to use them. Okay. So uh, let's, let's move on over to vocals first. I feel like people are... Uh, a lot of us have more access to vocals. A lot of people don't have the liberty to have a lot of track out. So let's go to vocals first. So this is the Abbey Road Saturator. Uh, this is the plugin that I use for the vocals. Um, I went over to a preset that was called Vocal Enhance, which made sense to me, right? Just to see what it is. And I like to always uh, use a preset within a plugin first, just so I can see how hard I can push the plugin. Or better yet, what are the... Are the uh, are the limits of the plugin. Like how hard can I crank this knob and that knob because we're learning. So this is what I used as a starting point to kind of tweak and get the sound that I wanted to. So I'm gonna play the vocal for you by itself. I'm gonna play it for you without the, um, the saturator and then I'm gonna play it for you with the saturator. Listen closely. So this is without first. And I swear to God, I'ma do just what I'm supposed to do. As long as I'm alive, I'ma do just what I can. Crazy how my enemies all used to be my friend. With. And I swear to God, I'ma do just what I'm supposed to do. As long as I'm alive, I'ma do just what I can. Crazy how my enemies all used to be my friend. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play it back and forth. I'm gonna bypass it and unbypass it and just listen closely as I pop it back and forth without first. Listen close. And I swear to God, I'm gonna do just what I'm supposed to do. As long as I'm Again. And I swear to God, I'm gonna do just what I'm supposed to do. As long as I'm alive, I'm gonna do just what I can. Crazy how my enemies all used to be my friends. Said they keep it real, but all they do is just pretend. So if you listen to that closely, it sounds like a blanket has been taken off the vocals. It literally, it sounds brighter. That's the most obvious. But there's also an excitement and a, a dynamic to it that just sounds a lot better. And that is with using this saturator, which has given me some saturation, a distortion, some harmonics, and it sounds amazing. Let me break down this plugin and how I got to this place. Okay, cool. So the Abbey Road Saturator is based off a very legendary EMI board. Uh, Big shout out to Waves for making this plugin as well as the Abbey Roads engineers. Um, basically, when you look at one thing, let's start here. You look at the thing that says saturator. What it's doing is, is it's modeling desks. So the red desk has a it has more of a of a tube a tube sound. It's very very uh, rugged. It sounds a lot more grittier, more uh, more meatier. It has a, a lot of grit to it, and I like that one. Now, if you switch it to the TG setting which I'll show you. It's a little smoother. Um, I noticed that uh, it has a much smoother and silkier high end as opposed to the red. The red has a little bit more aggression and that's what I wanted from it. So I'll show you the red and then I'll switch over to the TG. So listen to the red right quick. And I swear to God, I'm a dude just what I'm supposed to do. TG. And I swear to God, I'm a do just what I'm supposed to do. As long as I'm alive, I'm a do just what I can. Crazy how my enemies all used to be my friends. Said they keep it real, but all they do is just pretend. 
So you can hear when I engage the TG setting, you feel like the top end just gets a lot smoother and it's really unbothered, un unbothered in other places. But when I engage the red, you'll notice that there's a presence like in that 1.5 kilohertz range, there's a boost there and it has a, a little bit more aggression and it feels a little bit more rugged and grit. So for this particular song, that worked for me and that was great. Right now, what I'll do also is I'll exaggerate some things so you can see how far you can take it. If you look right underneath the saturator, you'll see a knob. What is this knob for? You can literally increase how much saturation you want from the red desk or the TG desk. And so this is where I pretty much had it, where I felt that it was great. So you can even increase or decrease how much of that saturation you want on there. So I'll exaggerate it. It's gonna distort a little bit, obviously, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna exaggerate it. So you can get an idea of what this thing can do. So listen closely. Man, I swear to God, I'ma do just what I'm supposed to do. Long as I'm alive, I'ma do just what I can. Crazy how my enemies all used to be my friends. Said they keep it real, but all they do is just pretend. I just wanna live right. Now let's crank it with the TG. Listen to the TG. Man, I swear to God, I'ma do just what I'm supposed to do. Long as I'm alive, I'ma do just what I can. Crazy how my enemies all used to be my friends. You can clearly hear that the TG is actually smoother and the red is a lot more rough when I crank that uh, knob up uh, a lot. And that's the cool thing. That's a really dope characteristic that it has. So let's put it back to the red. Okay, cool. Now let's move over to another setting on this plugin that I like a lot. It's called the Compander. And basically, layman's terms, let's make this super short and sweet and easy to understand. When you have it cranked to the left, you're gonna be affecting the harmonics in the lower frequencies. When you crank it to the right, you're gonna be affecting the distortion, saturation, and harmonics in the upper frequencies, in the higher frequencies. So obviously, you want more brightness, crank it to the right. If you want to affect something in the lows, crank it to the left, got me? Okay, let's try it out. So right now I had it more in the lower side. I wanted a little bit more body. I feel like I was getting enough brightness from the desks from switching it to the red and cranking a little bit, but I wanted some more some more bottom um, from it. So I think that's why I went more to the left. So listen closely. This is all the way to this is to the left, and I'll crank it and I'll play with it. Watch my me turn it up. Man, I swear to God, I'ma do just what I'm supposed to do. Long as I'm alive, I'ma do just what I can. Crazy how my enemies all used to be my friends. Said they keep it real, but all they do is just pretend. Man, that thing sounds amazing. So you can tell as soon as I turn it more to the right, it gets brighter, it gets more open. The blanket from the vocal just kind of comes off and it just opens up a lot. And when I move it to the left, obviously it affects that bottom and that that uh presence, that uh that feeling, that aggression. Um, so you can use it either way for those types of things. Another thing I'll show you is right underneath, you'll see the bands, right? These bands are basically playing with the frequencies. So it's basically saying, and this is it right here, check my mouse out. When I have it to the left, you can choose what low frequencies you want it to affect as far as how it's crossing the bands. So you could say, okay, in the 160 hertz range, I want you to affect that one when I throw it to the left. And then in the 1.5 kilohertz range, I want you to affect that when I'm on the right-hand side. Granted, you can go over here, click around, and choose which ones you want to affect. So you can affect the 3K range, you can affect the 750 kilohertz range. For this particular one, I want it to affect the 1.5 kilohertz range. And you can, obviously, it's the same exact thing for the one on the left, you can just use it that way as well. So that's a great thing to see. Um, the blend and mix uh, knobs, excuse me, or uh, faders that you see right here, pretty self-explanatory. Um, I would probably use it more if I was trying to do some type of parallel com parallel processing as far as uh, taking a sin signal, maybe destroying it and then blending it in. And that's basically what this allows me to do without having to do that as far as routing and stuff is concerned. I can literally go right over here and crank this blend and really find where I wanna blend in the original signal and the affected signal and basically combine those to a place where I feel great about it. So that's also something that's extremely powerful in the plugin that I really, really like a lot, as you can see with the blend. So in the mix, self-explanatory. Next and last thing I'll show you with this plugin is the pre-EQ section 
and the post EQ section. So the reason why this is really cool is because you can affect and EQ the vocal before processing or you can affect it after, which is great because say for instance, you feel like you got the perfect sound, but it's just too bright or it's too gritty or there's not enough low end. You can literally boost that just to, and, and that allows you to actually maintain the sound that you've crafted and just fine tune. And that's what I like about the plugin a lot because now in the plugin, I don't have to reach for another one, another EQ to kind of combat things. I can stay right in the plugin and get all that work done. One really big thing that I feel like people are not gonna tell you about, well, that I feel like is not gonna be discussed as much, but I think is extremely important, is this last section right here. This section that says mid, side, ST, or MSST. Stands for mid, sides, and stereo. What does it stand for? Let me tell you. Basically, the plugin or Waze has created a plugin where you can, by itself, you can affect the mids, you can affect the sides, or you can affect the stereo image, AKA the whole thing. And this is extremely powerful to have this function because now if I feel like the vocal is sitting just right in the middle, I like where it is, but I just want a little bit more on the sides, now I can just move on over here. I can click sides and I can add analog saturation and distortion just to the side um, information. I, and that's extremely powerful. That gives me so much to work with. Fortunately for me, I wound up using it as the stereo setting, which gave me effect over the entire vocal. And I liked it. But as time progresses, I'm sure that I'll mess around with some more stuff. And that's that. Okay. So that's that plugin that I use for the vocal. I'm going to move on over to this other plugin right here. And this is the MDMX Overdrive. Um, and this plugin is really dope. I'm gonna play you a before and after, and then I'll explain how I got there and what this plugin is doing. So let's play it without first. Listen close. with. Big, big, big difference. And you might be wondering, why did I do that? Why? Because I just felt like I needed to add some more excitement to that synth. That synth was cool. I liked the feel of it, but I just wanted a better feeling. And this plugin allowed me to add distortion and saturation, which gave me the, uh, the flexibility to create an entirely new tone out of the sound that popped through my mix. Uh, what I'll do is I'll play it for you uh, with the uh, I'll play this for you in the mix with it on, and then I'll play it for you outside of the mix um, with it off. So let's play it with it off first, and then I'll play it with it on. One sec. And I swear to God, I'ma do just what I'm supposed to do. As long as I'm alive, I'ma do just what I can. Crazy how my enemies all used to be my friends. Said they keep it real, but all they do is to pretend. I just wanna live right. Okay, cool. Now let's play it with. Listen closely. God, I'm a do just what I'm supposed to do. As long as I'm alive, I'm a do just what I can. Crazy how my enemies all used to be my friends. Said they keep it real, but all they do is just pretend. Now, obviously, within the song, this pad is something that is supposed to be subtle. It's a feeling, but I wasn't getting much of that feeling when I didn't have this distortion on to really bring out the grit of the synth. And I felt like me bringing out the grit of the synth was gonna give me more feeling, and so it did. If you listen closely to it, you can now feel those swells really swell, and it kind of surrounds those vocals in a really dope spot. So that's what I really liked about the plugin, and that's what it basically did for me in that sense. So now, Let's take a look at the plugin itself. Uh, obviously, you have an input stage. You have the same thing like the other Abbey Road Saturator. This has a stereo, a mid, a side, AKA you can affect the stereo, the mids, or the side information by itself, which is awesome. For this one, I want up just doing the stereo. I want up doing the entire thing because I wanted to change the entire sound. Over here, you have an HD on and off. Long story short, that HD on and off is a uh, is a computer uh, CPU power. If you want, if you don't mind uh, sacrificing some CPU power for it to sound better, turn it on. Works for you. 
Right here, you have more of a compression setting where you see this mild, moderate, extreme punch rider. This is a compressor that is in this plugin. So I've read and I played with it a little bit. Uh, when you go to punch, I believe it's a fixed uh, ratio when you do it with the punch and rider, you can really control the threshold and things of that nature and even use the blend knob to kind of figure things out. But if you have under the punch, you can even do mild, mild, moderate and extreme settings with those. So you can play around with those. Those are really more or less like, like uh, playing with the dynamics and the uh, and the compression settings for that whole thing. Right here is an EQ session, which is pretty self-explanatory. And then right here we have temperature that goes from blue to red. You can probably guess what that is probably going to do. Red is probably going to give you red is going to give you more grit, more more of a of a, an aggressive sound. Blue is going to be a lot smoother. For this one, I wanted something smooth. It's a pad. I didn't want to make something that was too aggressive. And then I have the mix knob. And basically what this mix knob is, it's a blending tool. Kind of how I was telling you back with the Abbey Road Saturator. If I felt like, hey, the effect is a little too much, I can literally dial it back and get some of the original signal back. Self-explanatory. And that's really what that is. Obviously there's a game knob, there's a low cut filter, et cetera. Really, really dope plugin. Um, I'll definitely probably be using this more on the rest of my synths. Funny thing about the MDMX is this is part of a trio. So there's the MDMX Screamer, there's the Overdrive, and then there's the uh, MDMX Fuzz, which all do uh, a bunch of things like that. Kind of like, think about it like guitar pedals. Like it's basically an uh, effects. Like it's just full of effects that uh, a lot of musicians like to use. And now they built it into a really dope, very, very functional plugin, which is awesome. Uh, one last thing I'll show you is I also use this Abbey Road uh, Saturator on a, I'll show you right now, one sec. I also use it on a synth. And I'm going to open this synth up one second. Sorry about that. And here's the synth right here. So I basically use this on a synth and it's a very subtle, subtle effect, but I used it because I, like I said, I wanted to add a little bit more grit to these synths. I'm, I'm really starting to get into a place where I'm using saturation and distortion on synths. It, it, it sounds really cool and it's giving me a really great sound. So check this out right quick. This is without. Whiff. Now, like I said, this is a subtle, subtle thing, but what do I feel? I feel the stereo image get bigger. I feel that now I really can actually hear the image moving within my headphones or my monitors if I was using it. It really gave life to that synth where I didn't even realize that it was kind of flat, but now I have this dynamic to it. Something I probably could have done is add some more saturation to it. Now realize that I don't have to increase the, the output or nothing like that. I can literally go over here to the saturator uh, knob and turn some of the saturation up. Let me see what happens. So let's check out and see what happens when I give it some more saturation. Listen close. So what I heard was, I heard it get a lot meaner. It got a little bit more grittier. And that's going to help me when I have something that I need, something more gritty as far as sense concerned. So that's extremely powerful. And that's really, really important to know and just have right there at your disposal. So long story short, guys, that was my plugin demo for the most part of Waves Abbey Road Saturator as well as their MDMX, definitely uh, Overdrive. You should definitely check out the MDMX uh, Fuzz and the Screamer that's also along with that trio, et cetera, for this analog saturation. That is how you use distortion in the good way not all distortion is bad. There's a lot of good in these distortion plugins these days um, that you can basically use and have fun with. So make sure you comment, like, subscribe. If you want any of these plugins, the link is right there below in my uh, description. Make sure you grab these. These are, I think these are amazing plugins and I think it's gonna add a lot to your mixes. Uh, make sure you follow us at Help Me Devon on the Instagram and uh, ask me any questions, comments, or concerns you have in the, in the uh, comment section below. And um, until next time, you guys.